four, five, six. That's it. Welcome back to the Sorted Food Sheepdog Trials. I'm joined here by Farmer Hoggett, who's going to explain to us about what Babe has been doing. No, I've been to auction, I've picked up some vintage kitchen gadgets, and today James is going to take a step back into the past. The good old days. You excited for this? I'm excited. I'm ready. This Tell is going to be when. so much fun. Lift the clutch on number one. Oh, it's a gun. It's a squirty gun. Oh no. Am I mean, is it sausages? No. Yes. No. Plungy plunge. Plungy plunge. But what is it that you're plungy plunging? I don't know what I'm plungy plunging. Cookie dough. Cookie dough? Yes, James, this is a vintage cookie press. Italian, and we think it's from about the 1960s or 1970s. Vintage is a very broad term, but technically, anything over 20 years, so we are vintage, but less than 100 because then it becomes antique. But we should bear in mind when we're thinking about these, cast your mind back when they did exist, what were they like? And as opposed to comparing it to today's gadgets, would you have one now? I think we should think retro. Would you like some cookie dough to try? Yeah. James, what I've given you is some cookie dough. It's for spritz cookies from the German of spritzen cookie, which means to squirt. Basically, we need you to squirt cookies onto your sheet and bake them off. Press the trigger once or twice, depending on the size of biscuit required. Release and lift gun off the oven sheet. I, I feel like that worked better than I expected. I don't know what you're expecting, but I was expecting a mess. Oh, now you're getting into a rhythm. You can always change the dial and do different rows of different ones. And the good thing about this, unlike a piping bag, is you can change the dial from one end without having to take all the mix out. Was that a passive aggressive suggestion? To very the I was just thinking about the thumbnail. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> Spaffed it. No, to spaff something is to do it well. <laughs> well done, Ebers. I'm really glad you suggested that we change the nozzle. <laughs> it was going so well. What's that so for? Another passive aggressive move from Ebers to say, clean up your shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just offering an <laughs> help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've filled a sheet. 177 degrees Celsius. Tell they're cooked. It's going in. Okay, while those are baking off, let's talk price. So obviously this is 60 years old and we bought it in auction. Mike's eBay account. <laughs> what do you reckon we paid for it? Uh, 20 quid. Not a bad shout because that is the price of a modern day one if you bought it from an online retailer. But this one, 11.99. Bargain. This is obviously the first time that we're using a cookie press, but if you've got one at home or you have used one, let us know what your results were like. Did you get the lovely intricate details? Send us some pictures. It's done. I'm going for it. I think you're going to be very pleased with the results. <laughs> I just... You know. Ebers, your one came out nicely. <laughs> It's very hard to judge the gadget by the result of these cookies because it doesn't necessarily mean the gadget isn't working. I mean, I'm sure they taste okay. Well, you know the price, you've seen the results. So there's only one question to ask you. Is it highly rated or is it just outdated? I think it's hard to test baking equipment because it relies a lot on us and the recipe that we've used. So I'm gonna say highly rated because I think that works with a bit of practice. Our cookies are not highly rated. All right, James, on to number two. Lift the cloche. Wowza. Wow, wow. Is it a tea or coffee machine? James, this is a vintage Goblin Teas Made. Model 854. I'll have you know. A teas made is a machine that will automatically make you a cup of tea. And this used to be really, really popular. My nan and granddad used to have one. They'd lie in bed, the alarm clock would go off. Yeah? No. Yeah, and you'd set the alarm and it would make a cup of tea at the time the alarm clock goes off. So when you get up, your tea is already made. That's better than 
some of the gadgets we have nowadays where you have to open an app to boil a kettle. Ugh. No, set it to an alarm clock. Does it automatically. 1978. I get it now. I get it. I totally get it. But what I didn't know is that Teasmates actually first came about in the Victorian era. Very, very rare. I don't know how they worked. How did they work? They were lethal. They used to have a, like ignition that you had to have on for the entire time. So it was kind of a fire hazard, which is why they weren't particularly popular until electricity came a thing in homes. That must have changed your life. It made life a lot easier. Yeah. So these go in here, right? Tea bags in the teapot. Water in the kettle. Adjust the clock to the right time, which we've done, like a couple of minutes to 6 a.m. So then I switch it to auto? I think so. Oh, whoa! Light. Bedside lamp. That's <laughs> cool. Hello. When the tea is made and the alarm sounds, the knob of the rotary switch may be returned to light on or off, so you can just have your bedside lamp on. And that will silence the buzzer. That's going to heat the water up, right? Yeah, and, and then come out here. Into your teapot. So what, at what point does that happen? Once it's hot enough. Whilst that's heating up, let me show you the box. Nice. Doesn't that look like the most 1960s thing you've ever seen? Yeah, I recognise that tea set. When describing the image on the box, Tea's Made Collector, that's a real thing, John Atak said, it portrays an immaculate apparition in a nylon nightdress about to lift a cuppa to her scarlet lips. The rest of her makeup and coiffure is clearly undisturbed by a solid eight hour kip. Best of all is that her hand, on the point of grasping the cup handle, already has the little finger crooked and raised in the classic style of the refined imbiber. Wonderful. Wow. I also have another fun fact for you, something that you might have seen, is the uh, Queen music video of I Want to Break Free. Brian May gets woken up by a tease maid. I'll have you know. Iconic. Yeah. It's, it's working. I don't know if you can see it. Guys, I don't like it. Wake up! <laughs> Ready! Did it spit some stuff into your teapot? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have maybe one full cup of tea. I, got, I actually got genuinely scared there. I thought it was going to explode. The only thing I'm seeing with this is once you're awake, you absolutely want to snooze or switch off that alarm. Can you pull me one, James? Is that the same? Did that come in the box? No, no, I bought this. <laughs> you had the same cup. I mean, I think the tea's probably going to be tea. I think... Oh, that is tea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, it's made a cup of tea. It's turned the light on. It scared the sh out of us with that alarm noise. How much do you think we paid for it? £30. We bought this for double that. It's £59.99. Okay, that did cross my mind that it might be about that, but I thought it couldn't be about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get your thoughts through a very simple question. Is it a tease made or is it tea shade? It's, it did what it says it is supposed to do, which is make tea, tell the time and scare you out of bed. <laughs> so I guess it's a tease made. You were worried by that one, James. Should we have a look at number three? Yes, let's. <laughs> Okay, James, lot 7483, lift the cloche. Oh, God. Is it a toast? Oh, it's a toaster. James, this is a 1940s Bull Pit and Sons Swan brand electric toaster. I think it looks really cool. It could be on the table of an independent hipster cafe called Toast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a go. It's really hot and it doesn't have an alarm switch. It's, it's just plugged in. Is this right? So. Toast used to be smaller. <laughs> this is insanely dangerous. It needs to be a very specific size of bread that kind of catches on the grill. Ooh. Oh. I would say that's good coverage and a good colour. It is good. Yeah. So it's, it's vintage, it's manual, um, but I can't complain because it's kind of like turning a record over, you know? It's, it's like nice, it's, yeah. it's intimate. Really silly question. 
I'm guessing the only bit of that whole machine that you can touch are the tiny little black knobs, because everything else is stupidly really hot. hot. Yeah, yeah, cool. It's it's like it feels like it's got good grill marks. Yeah, I mean, it's toasted the bread really well. It heated up insanely quickly, slightly dangerous, but <laughs> exciting. It's not as good as a toaster, but that's because they've it, it just evolved, but it works really well. I think what's fascinating about some of these vintage gadgets is actually it's 80 years old and it works and it still does exactly what it says on the tin. And I don't know how many appliances you could buy today that would still work in 80 years time. Yeah. That is so true. What does it taste like? I can like? confirm it is toast. <laughs> Okay, now for the impossible question. How much do you reckon we paid for an 80-year-old vintage toaster off of eBay? 40 pounds. 22. 20 pounds. 22 what pounds. A bargain. Is this the best thing since sliced bread, or would you just stay in bed? It's, it's the best thing since sliced bread. I enjoy it very much. Right, the final gadget. Give the cloche a lift. Let's find out if it's the best of the bunch. It had better be. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, it's written on it. <laughs> it is written on it. It's a soda stream. James, this is a soda stream. Now, this one is from the 1970s, one of the original ones. The company's still around today. They're still making soda streams, so they must be good because they're still popular. We want to know your thoughts on this one. Cool. I'd like to try it. Look at how happy the family are when basically you can create your own diner soda at home. Look, it just, it brings smiles to everyone's face. I like the photography. I like, I like that kind of fakeness. Let's also talk about the wraparound image though. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. James, how worried were you by the teas made oh, no. and the toaster? Oh no, there's because like gas under pressure. We bought stuff. this and it came Oh, with man. original syrups and an original canister of gas. I hate, oh, that's so heavy. <laughs> the original gas canister. Okay, James, the instructions are in front of you. Good luck. Lay it down. Red cap off. I screw the cylinder clockwise using finger tight pressure only. That's finger tight pressure. So far, so good. Okay, yeah, safety base, on. Fill a soda stream bottle with cold water up to the line marked on the bottle. Pull the bottle holder towards you and insert the bottle into the tube. Done. Close the bottle holder and pull the operating handle fully forward. I'm gonna take cover. Janice! Between four and six presses will usually be sufficient. One, two, three, Four. Five. Sounds fizzy. Six. I think you're carbonated, mate. God, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I have carbonated water. I think they're really cool and retro and we're glad they came with the thing, but we did buy SodaStream's more recent cola syrup. Slowly down the side of the neck. Nice. Well, I am alive. I'm <laughs> uninjured. Tick, tick, tick. Screw the cap securely onto the bottle and gently turn it upside down a couple of times to allow your concentrate to fully mix with the water. Let me get your glass. Oh. Ooh. Should, should have done that while Ben didn't have his ass in front of the camera. <laughs> Ebers, you get the small glass. <laughs> You've been a naughty boy. Cheers. Cheers. It's a very sweet tasting cola. It's carbonated. Maybe it could have done with a little less syrup, but it's not bad. You can carbonate anything. That's what I love about it. Milk. Apparently only water, so the instructions say, but I'm sure, as a kid, we carbonated all sorts. That's why I brought you some white wine over. A little bit of sparkling wine, wanna give it a go? Oh yeah, do that. Do you want me to? Yeah. I'll do it, yeah, sure. Honestly, why did I agree to do this a second time? <laughs> I'm alive and unhurt. <laughs> you should have quit while you're in, mate. 
two, three. It pops, it tells you when it's ready. Four, five, six. That's it. Seven. I can hear it fizzing. That's it, that's it. Uh, Release the pressure. So what we learn from this is that wine carbonates at a slightly different rate to water. So when you release it, you get a bit more of a whoosh. <laughs> Ask me the question. <laughs> we've all had a really great time. We've all got a little bit wet and wild. Um, how much do you think we paid for the Soda Street? I think you probably paid 50 quid. It's a good guess, mate. We paid 50 pounds. Did you? Yeah. Bang on. So, James, just one question left to go in honour of their tagline and slogan. Would you get busy with the fizzy or does it leave you in a bit of a tizzy? I got busy with the fizzy and I'm in a tizzy. Do you like it though? I can see why it was so popular back in the day because I think it allowed people to make fizzy drinks at home, which was cool. And now it's changed to it allows people to make fizzy drinks as an alternative to sugary soft drinks. So that's kind of cool. What I would say is don't try wine at home. Just don't listen to Ebers, ever, ever. Well, over to you at home. Did you enjoy our journey into the past? And which one of those gadgets was your favourite? And of course, if you want us to check out more vintage kitchen gadgets, then you're going to have to suggest some, so comment down below. And you can join in the conversation over on Twitter using the hashtag Sorted Gadgets. Should we go dry you off? Yes, please. Would you come in with me? Of course. Thanks. I was, when you said vintage, you know, I was thinking noughties, but this looks a bit older than that. Oh, what do you mean noughties? Did you look at him and think noughties? Naughty. Oh. <laughs>